Okay, here we go. 1.6 d is in delta. Now, in 1.5, we learned um, a couple formulas here, and let me kind of move these out of the way for right now, and we'll come back to those. We had, if we have something first plus something here, and if we squared it, this equals whatever we have there squared, whatever we have there squared, and in the middle was always 2, the number 2, always, always, times this, times this. And we were done. So if I had x plus 7, and I squared it, this would equal x squared, because I squared the first term, square the second term, 7 times 7 is 49, 2 times whatever the first term is, x whatever the second term is, 7. Then we can clean it up. And get 49. We also did something like 3x minus 5. And the quantity was squared. And when we have a minus there, it's the same formula as this. The only difference is this sign here changes to a minus. Everything else is the same. So let's look at this. We take the first term and square it. Second term and square it. We have a minus, because of this minus right here, a 2 times 3x times 5. Only 5, not the sign. The sign is not multiplied as part of it. It's just a and b, not the sign in front of a and b. So that gives us 9x squared. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. x plus 25. Notice this is a negative. It will have to be a negative because that is a negative. This is a positive because that's a positive. All right, so sometimes, if you look at our answer here, we're given this and we want to get back to this. So there is a plan in order to do that, and it is called um, factoring given perfect square trinomials. So this only works with what are called perfect square trinomials. So. Let's look and see what a perfect square trinomial is. Let's see. Let's say that this is the answer, or this is the problem that you're given. First of all, you have to decide or figure out if it's a perfect square trinomial. So here's the rule. Can I find a number that when I multiply it by itself, it gives me this? Um, some of you have had enough math that when I say, if you can take the square root of that, then um, that's step one. Can I take the square root of that? Or in other words, is there a number I can multiply by itself to get this? Okay, if those two things are true, I'm on a good roll here. This middle term, does this middle term equal the square root of this times the square root of this times two? So let me write that out for you. See if I can move this a little bit. All right, so step one. Can I take the square root of that? Yes, 3x. Can I take the square root of that? Yes, 5. Oh, let me move that over a little bit. All right, 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. Now... I'm going to always, always, always take this minus and bring it here. Can I multiply 2 times this times this and do I get negative 30x? Yes, I do. So therefore, it's a perfect square trinomial. And you can do a lot of this in your head. Square root of that, 3x. Okay, good. Square root of that is 5. 5 times 3x is 15x times 2. I get 30x. So if that's the case, it's a perfect square trinomial. 
So therefore, the answer then is very, very easy to find. All right, let me erase all this goop here. So to find the answer, all we do is, or to put down the answer, make a set of parentheses, put a two here, take the square root of this, take the square root of this, and whatever sign this is, put it there and you're done, okay? So pretty easy once, once you figure out if it's a perfect square trinomial. All right, let's keep going here. I had some other ones that I wanted to look at that I had written down here. Where did I put those? Mm, there they are. Okay, so let me get rid of all this stuff here so it's not distracting. And let's look and see what we can do here. So, perfect square trinomial. Can I take the square root of that? Yes, it's 4x. Square root of 36 is 6. Can I multiply these two together and then multiply it by 2 and get this? 4 times 6 is 24 times 2 is 48. So it's a perfect square trinomial. So therefore, I can very easily write this as parenthesis squared this sign here. Square root of 16x squared, 4x. Square root of 36, 6, and I'm done. Okay, let's look at this one. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 49 is 7. If I take 7 times x and multiply that by 2, do I get a 14x? Yes, I do. So therefore, it's a perfect square trinomial, and I can make parentheses, a square. This sign here goes here. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 49 is 7, and I'm done. So I talked really fast through that because I wanted you to realize it's really, really quick and simple to do. So we'll do one more here. Is it a perfect square trinomial? 3x times 2? Yep, it is. Okay, so now I can solve it. So, parentheses, this goes here. 2 always goes there. Square root of that, square root of that, and you just factored it. Okay. Okay, one more example, and then we'll move on here. Okay, we've done these before when you get this doggone y squared and a y there. And remember, you just don't do much with it. So first of all, we're going to see if we can factor anything out of there, anything common. And we see that a 2 goes into 8, 24, and 18. So that leaves me with 4x squared minus 12 xy plus 9y squared. That doesn't look like a squared. There we go. So it looks like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're just going to look at this. We're just going to let this 2 follow down here, and it's going to be in the answer. So let's see what we've got. Um, can I take the square root of 4x squared? Yes. Can I take the square root of 9y squared? Yes. Can I multiply them together? Yes. If I multiply that by 2, do I get 12xy? Yes. So that means... I'm on the right track as far as a perfect square trinomial. So then, a parenthesis, the sign here, a square there. I put the square root of that, which is 2x, square root of that, which is 3y, and then this 2 trails along with it, and I'm done. Okay, this next part, the difference of two squares, bottom of page 73, if we have um, something like x minus 3 times x plus 3, and we are to do the FOIL, first, outside, inside, last. These two here, 3 minus 3, cancel, and we're left with that for an answer. 
So one of the things I want you to notice here, and let me erase how we got the answer and just look at what we started with in the answer. If we have two binomials that have the same first terms and the same last terms, and the only difference between them is one is a negative and one is a positive, all you do is square the first term, x squared, square the second term, 9, and put the negative sign in there. Okay? That's how you solve that. Now, let's say you're wanting to go the other way. The answer is going to be the difference of two squares, or this is the difference of two squares, meaning I can take the square root of that, and I can take the square root of that, and the difference means subtraction. So that's where they come up with the difference of two squares. So if I have x squared minus 9, and I want to go back to this, very quickly, I make two parentheses, put a plus and a minus in there, square root of the first term here, square root of the second term here, and I'm done. So it is pretty, pretty painless. x squared minus 25. This will always be a negative. If that is not a negative, you won't be able to factor it any more than what it is. If that was x squared plus 25. But because it's a negative, I can make my two parentheses, square root, square root, a plus, minus, and I'm done. And that's all there is to that. All right, let's look at number 19 on page 74, 81. It, they have an a squared. I like you, just using x's. Minus 25y squared. Okay. So all we're going to do there is we're going to make two parentheses. A plus and a minus. Take the square root of that. Put it in both places. Square root of that. Whoops. 5 y, 5, y, and we're done. And I'm sorry, that does not look like a 5, but it is. All right, number 20. Getting a little bit tricky here. 4, x to the 6th minus 1. So remember earlier, I said whenever we have an exponent that's even, we're going to try to rewrite that as a squared. Yeah, let me as a squared with an exponent here so that when we multiply it by 2, we get 6. So that, x cubed squared, is the same as that. So we'll write it like that. Okay, so that being the case, what we're going to do is we are going to make two parentheses, a plus and a minus. Square root of 4, square root of x cubed. I'm just going to separate. This is why I square it like this, because everything in here then is what goes here and there. And then the square root of 1 is always 1. So there you go. Um, the only other kind that you're going to run into is like 22, but it's really pretty simple. Okay, so we're going to make two parentheses, plus, minus, square root of the first term, square root of the second term. There you go. Square root of four ninths. What number times itself gives us four? What number times itself gives us nine? All right, they've got a few more examples, and then they do the sum and difference between two squares, so we'll get that, and that'll end up being in 1.6e. So let's continue on with a couple of examples here. Example 22 gives us 16x to the fourth. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite these again. 16x squared. So this is going to be a 2 there. Okay, so remember, this is always going to be a 2, and this will be whatever we multiply by 2 to get this. So we're going to do the same thing over here. Okay? Two parentheses. 
plus, minus, doesn't matter which order, square root of 16, square root of x square of x to the fourth. So pretty much you're just transferring that down here. Whoops, I'm sorry. That should be 4x squared. And this is going to be 9y squared from here. And 9y squared from there. And that is it for that. Okay, well there's a couple more examples in um, this section on the difference of two squares. Bottom of page 74 and 75, and then we'll finish up with 1.6e is an echo. But 1.6d is done, and join me for the next one.